Aloha and welcome to our video on energy and mineral resources. The goals for today's video are to distinguish between renewable and non-renewable resources. We'll identify which energy resources are fossil fuels. We'll predict which energy resources might replace dwindling petroleum supplies in the future. We'll describe the processes that concentrate minerals into large deposits as they form. And then we'll recognize how non-metallic mineral resources can be used. Okay, when we're talking about renewable and non-renewable resources, the key here is that it all comes down to time. Renewable resources can be renewed in your generation, in your lifetime. Non-renewable take a much longer period of time. So if we think about a real simple one, like if we take a tree, you can cut down a tree, you can use it for firewood, you can plant a new tree and it'll grow back in your lifetime that you can do the same process again. So most plants are going to be renewable because they can grow back in time and they work that way. Non-renewable resources would be things like coal. Now you can take coal and you can burn it, you can use it that way, but it takes millions of years for it to replenish or to replace itself. So you can't do this in a lifetime, that's why we consider it non-renewable. Now other examples of renewable resources are things that are inexhaustible, which means they'll last forever. Things like the sun and the wind things of that nature. Those are going to be considered renewable resources because we have an endless supply of those things. When the sun burns out, we're done. So it doesn't make a difference. When the wind stops blowing, that won't happen until the sun dies off. So it's kind of, they'll always be there for us. Other examples of non-renewable might be things like nuclear fuels. Okay, we can run out of the supplies that we have. We can't just make more that way. So. Remember, it's time. If we can replenish it, it's renewable. If we can't, then it's non-renewable. Okay, let's take a quick look at fossil fuels. Um, obviously, from the name implies, they're fuels that come from fossils, and fossils are remains of once living organisms. So one of the things I want you to realize is that 90% of our energy in the United States comes from these fossil fuels, so we're heavily fossil fuel dependent. The biggest that we use for producing electricity is gonna be coal. Coal starts off as plants like peat in a bog moss or something of that nature. You have these forces acting on it, burial pressure, so being layered underneath stuff, putting those layers on top of it, add pressure, add heat because as it gets deeper inside of the earth it heats up, and time. And you'll notice that this peat gets squeezed down into lignite, then into bituminous coal, and then anthracitic coal. So it takes millions of years to form this, and then we can collect it through mining and burn it and make electricity from it. Petroleum and natural gas form along the same lines. You take once living things that are going to settle to the bottom when they die. We'll notice that what we have is as this goes on, these organisms are turned into natural gas. Same process, you're applying pressure, you're applying heat, you have time. We can get trapped natural gases and we can have trapped oils that way. One of the concerns with fossil fuels is that what happens when we run out? Well, we're exploring some other things. Currently, we're looking at tar sands and oil shale. Both of these are very messy, very environmentally polluting ways of collecting these petroleum products. So while now they'll fulfill the need, it might be time to start looking for things otherwise because these are very unclean fuels for us to be using. Okay, so we've talked about fossil fuels and those would be like a deposit that we would mine out and get things for. There's other ones as well. Um, we have mineral reserves and mineral ores. Ores tend to be metals. Reserves tend to be other minerals that we'll use. But reserves and ores are terms that we use when we're talking about having money. So that means that they're financially rewarding to mine these things out. There's enough of the material there that it pays for the cost of the mining and you still can make a profit from them. Now they form through these three, igneous processes, hydrothermal processes, and placer deposits. What we're talking about is if we talk gold, simply gold, what we'll notice is, is if you have this intrusion of magma into the system, it's going to be hot and it's gonna cause things to melt. So if you can melt the gold down, then you have liquid gold. And as this recedes out, it's gonna cool and you'll have this gold that's melted and falling or flowed into these little cracks and crevices. And what will happen is over time, they'll cool down and that's how you can find those big veins of gold and things of that nature. Now, whether it's hot water or magma, that takes care of the first two. When we're talking placer deposits, what we're talking about is if that gold finds its way up to the surface and then starts getting broken off and eroded, 
it'll travel down river and as it goes down river it'll get placed and that's what we're talking about here is placer deposits where we're seeing this golden rivers and things of that nature a lot of times if they find the gold what they'll do is they'll march up river and keep looking for it and hopefully they can find that big mother load that they're looking for now we've talked about fossil fuels we've talked about some metals a little bit the lesson we'll go into a little more detail the last one are these non-metallic minerals and these are the ones that we're going to collect for money they have to find in the reserve so that we can find them and make a profit from them Perhaps the most common ones we know of are gemstones. So if we're hunting out through diamonds or corundum or other gemstones like that, these would be mineral resources that we can make a profit off of. In building supplies, we have limestone, clay, quartz. Around here in Vegas, we have an awful lot of gypsum. So those are building materials that we can mine out and use those commercially. Salt, table salt is one. They actually mine it out. Um, with the table salt, what you'll find is there'll be salt deposits down underneath. And they'll drill a hole here and they'll drill a hole here. They'll pump in water, dissolve the salt, make salt water, and then pump that out and then dry out the water. And that's how they get salt. And then also we can get some fertilizer materials such as potassium and sulfur as well. Okay, so that's it for this video. As always, good luck on the lessons and we'll see you in the next video.